I can't believe that I actually liked this movie. I would even go so far as to say, I respect and admire this movie because I can't believe it pulled this off. I dragged my feet watching this screener. I, I felt that the movie would be torture. Um, and, you know, watching movie screeners at home is difficult. And I'm sure all of you have had this situation. You know, you know we're, we're stuck with this pandemic. We're under, like, semi-quarantine at this point. You know, you're distracted. You know, being able to get up and pause the movie is, I think, a plus and a minus because it sometimes allows for too many interruptions, to, you know, to go take care of things. You have your phone right next to you. Uh, I think it's, again, a double-edged sword. But I have to tell you, this is one of the few movies that I've watched recently where I watched it all the way through. And I w it really had me. Partially because I couldn't believe it was pulling it off. All right, I was like, wow, I can't believe they made this work. All right, so Fat Man is an adult holiday movie. I cannot stress this enough. I know that it has Santa in it, but it's super adult. You know, in the grand tradition of bad Santa, and the ref. If you feel someone is age appropriate to watch either of those two movies, then they may watch Fat Man. It's hyper violent and in fact has moments so offensive that even though I think it's a good movie, I was like, that immediately disqualifies it from my recommending it to some people I know who love Christmas. I love Christmas too. Um, I had to put on my like, you know, intellectual critic glasses for this. I mean, there are things that you're like, it's just a deal breaker. I think some people would be just really offended by some of the things that happen in here. To do, like, you just can't do that to Santa. But I don't know. I think that if you just told somebody what you were going to do, they'd be like, that's disgusting and appalling. But in the context of the film, with the commentary, I can't believe this film has commentary. With the commentary at work, it actually does work. I mean, for instance, there is a lone shooter scenario at Santa's workshop. That's all I'll say. But you know what? Those are the times that we live in. And I think it's kind of brilliant to put that in this movie. I mean, talk about bringing it home. That's the world we live in. There are even active shooters at Santa's workshop because there have been active shooters at other places where you would think that they would never happen and it's appalling that they're there. In fact, Fat Man is so timely that and the very strong work done in front of and behind the camera, across the board, there's no weak points here, make it a surprisingly good movie. But before we talk further about Fat Man as a film, I want to address its star, Mr. Mel Gibson. In fact, last night when I tweeted out that this film was actually pretty darn good, many of your first reactions were you just couldn't see yourself watching a movie starring Mel Gibson. And I don't blame you. I mean, when I saw the trailer, I don't blame that reaction. When I saw the trailer for this film, I cringed that poor Marion Jean-Baptiste had to kiss a man who'd been recorded using such horrible racial slurs against the black community. Mel Gibson is a man who has done and said so many horrible things, just so horrible, that it is impossible not to think of them whenever you look at him. I, I cannot. I, I mean, I can't not think of those things. Uh, he has blamed it on his alcoholism and has tried to make amends, but uh, I mean, at least publicly. You know, you never know if someone's truly sorry if they're just trying to get their career back. I happen to know people who have interacted with Mel Gibson at like small events, so they feel they've really gotten, you know, a true interaction with him, pri you know, private in a private interaction recently, you know, once he's supposed to have been reformed. And they've reported back to me that, you know, he's just simply not a good person. But he's a very talented person. So that's why I think that his behind the camera efforts have gotten more of a past post, -contro uh, a past post controversy, because at least you don't have to look at him, right? But here, hidden under a gruff beard and playing a tortured, bitter Santa, that baggage plays into the role. So I had an easier time watching him here. I don't know if it's the role. I don't know if it's the passage of time. But I did have a problem with him in the trailer. But for some reason, in the context of this film, it worked. Like when I saw him in Daddy's Home too, I thought it would be OK there. But it wasn't. I had a hard time with him in that movie. Here, again, I think he's very well cast. And he, he does a really good job. You know, you have to admit, as, an, as a, strictly from an acting standpoint, he delivers here. And he still has, you know, he still has that it factor, that star, that, you know, what makes him a, seem like a star. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine I'd be defending a movie starring Mel Gibson about a hitman hired to kill by a mean little boy to kill Santa. But I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it, a good movie is a good movie. And this is one of those cases where it really comes down to whether or not you can separate a person from their work. Um, 
And I don't have the answer to that. I don't think it's a very clear answer either. And I think we're having to ask ourselves this question way too many times. People need to get it under control, man. You know, I mean, I don't, you know, it's like we're supposed to be being entertained here. We don't have to have these horrible, you know, moral forks in the road when we're trying to decide what movie to watch. But that's the case here. And I'll be curious down below as to whether or not you think you're going to give this movie a shot. I think the movie will probably be surprisingly successful. So that might get a couple of more people to check it out more than normally would. And again, you know, you feel bad for everybody here because they did such a great job. It would be a shame for their work to be ignored. But they did hire Mel Gibson. But he's very good in the role. Oh, it's a really difficult situation. Now, this film was clearly made for almost no money. But this is one of the best examples I've ever seen of talent overcoming lack of budget. You know, I ju- I, I'm reviewing Freaky in the next 24 hours or so. And Freaky also is a very cheap film. But that is done in a negative way. It, you know, you can tell they just don't, it's not professional in many cases. But here, you really feel like a very professional people are working on this movie. They just don't have a lot of money to make it. So that's really impressive. The movie also cleverly strips down Christmas because they don't have the money to do like a full-blown Hollywood Christmas. So they like try to work that to their advantage. And I think they do it. It still manages to turn on the holiday cheer with visual touches here and there. I mean, it's like a subtle Christmas feeling, but it's very much there. Plus some well-timed Christmas songs. I thought they were very well utilized and a very strong music score overall that switches from holiday cheer to tense action very effectively. I was like, I often would be watching the movie and be like, I can't believe this score. I can't believe this scene. This scene should not work, but yet it does. The acting is also top notch across the board, which helps even from Chance Hurstfield playing a surprisingly evil little boy. Many times I was like, I think you might have crossed the line with this kid, but I think they made their point. I think they made their point, you know, talking about children becoming maybe a little bit too bad these days was very interesting. Again, I told you this movie has very strong commentary. The Nelms brothers, who have a slim resume that would never even hint that they were capable of pulling this off, really deliver as writer-directors. The screenplay, very clever. A top-notch mix of drama and comedy. It's very, very nimble, very deft, and, and you know, turning from one to the other. It has excellent pacing that never rushes the story. It feels very organic. And that's, that's just, it's a wonder to behold. And including the military was a stroke of genius with both strong commentary and raising the stakes in the action sequences. And it also sets up some very clever misdirects. There's one moment in the script, I'm not gonna give it away. It's so subtle, but I was just like, that was genius. I never saw it coming. And it sets, the, it sets that moment up just so perfectly. And the directing is also very good. Such strong, masterful vision. You know, the uh, the Nelmas brothers really know what they want to do here, and they do it. There's a montage of Walton Goggins' road trip to find Santa. It's, it's incredible. It's perfect, from Goggins' acting to the editing to what they put in the, each shot. I mean, you got to see it. It's a, It's like... Like, this sometimes does feel a little bit like a student film, but like everyone should get an A plus and like get an agent. You're like, you guys are really talented. Uh, so often someone comes up with a high concept idea, hitman hired to kill Santa, but then doesn't know what to do with it. See, freaky. But this movie does, and that's really a welcome surprise, a rare surprise. And it helps that there's a strong commentary running underneath as well. That gives the film some weight and gravitas uh, and makes it not seem irresponsible. With Santa reimagined as a salt of the earth, red state American. I can't believe what a clever, timely, brilliant idea that turns out to be. He drives a pickup truck, runs a factory. Santa's workshop as a factory, a middle America factory, is like a fascinating idea. I thought that was just incredible to see. And he, and this Santa hates that the world wants to judge him by his financial success. What a commentary on Christmas. So many times people talk about the commercialism of Christmas, but this is one of the most unique angles I've seen about that discussion. And deep down, this Santa, despite the rough edges, is just a good man. And to him, he feels that should be enough. I mean, I was really amazed. I mean. And also the take on Santa's, you know, watching you so, be, you know, to see if you're good or not. I mean, it was just like, I was like, wow. I mean, I don't know if this is ever choices that I would make, but I just think they're so unique and clever and well done and are, put such an interesting twist. You know, you have to remember, I'm someone who loves Elseworld stories. So I see this and I'm like, 
that's brilliant. So I really liked that. And also, I have to say, despite all these changes, speaking of Elseworlds stories, I came to truly believe as I watched the film in this version of Mr. and Mrs. Claus. I didn't feel it was sacrilegious or wrong. I was like, I love them. I think they're great. Thanks to the script and performances by Gibson and John Baptiste. And I would like to see a sequel, quite frankly. I mean, also, I feel this is probably one of the, in terms of these two characters, this is probably one of the most respectful and accurate depictions of red state pre-Trump. I want to stress that pre-Trump red state POV that I've seen in a long time from Hollywood. Maybe it's because it's not really from Hollywood, but I suspect because of that, this film will really speak to those communities in particular and do potentially quite well in theaters right now that are open and also on streaming. I think people are going to find this movie. They're going to talk about it. And I think that they, this could be a sleeper hit. I don't think I'll watch Fat Man every year like I do other Christmas movies, but I think it's the perfect holiday movie for 2020. And again, I'd very much like a sequel and to see where the story and excellent, clever world building could go from here, especially with maybe a little bit bigger budget. And even if people don't, you know, again, even if you're not from a red state or have that POV, I wouldn't be dismissive of this. I think it's really interesting. It's really, I would you know, maybe that's why I like it so much. It does remind me of a very clever, like a comic book, because comic books do this all the time, that takes a, a, a well-known idea. You know, this is like, you know, when people do like twists on the Justice League, right? And they do commentary on that, like, you know, how Watchmen does and the boys and stuff like that. But imagine now doing it with Santa. That's what I feel this is. And so I, I'm really impressed. So that's my re review of Fat Man. I can't believe it's so positive. I'm really curious. I hope a lot of you watch it so we can talk about it. Tweet me about it when you see it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. It hits theaters this Friday, and you can get it digital Tuesday, November 17th. So you can watch it pretty darn soon. All right, share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now. 